No, I, I get that. It was oh. an Easter egg, you know, it was one of those, you know, fancy little cheat codes that gives you something extra to deal with, and I get that. Oh, the fight has... What the? Sorry, the fight's begun. You're looking at Gohex's King K rule versus Counter Spike's Pokemon Incineroar. From Alpha... And, uh, no, sorry, from Sun and Moon, if you remember. Okay. Generation 8. Sun, okay, Sun and Moon is where they uh, introduced the Hawaii ripoff, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. Ooh, go so back to hitting him with that. the up air. I was absolutely mad about this. All these, like, different variations of Gen 1? Uh huh. No, I, that was dumb. That was absolutely ridiculous to me. Ooh, go back to doing his. We're reaching and grasping for straws to just make more money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And nah, that was, that was stupid. Gohex putting a lot of pressure with his King Gage rule on the Incineroar, doing just a fantastic job, really. Incineroar on 90%, two stocks, and the King K rule on three at 82, about to lose another stock. That makes a lot. Of, that makes a lot of sense. They're saying because Moist Meatball is saying about you know Moist it's one Meatball. Of the, it's always gonna be Moist Meatball. Sorry, uh -huh. sorry, but it's it's gonna be no, it's because funny. Meatball and, sorry. Um, Golex knocking the Incineroar off the stage at one stock. Still is three stocks. Will he three stock this match? Gonna have Dark Link in every game because of the creator being uh, too cry to let it go. That was a very common thing back in the day, which uh -huh. is why there are so many Easter eggs in all those old school games. Because creators wanted to have their own tag and their own input and their own, you know, stamp on a game. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, uh, Ready Player One is such an accurate depiction of early player games and early, you know, that old pop culture games. But Easter eggs were prevalent throughout games throughout the spectrum in the early 80s and 90s. Like because, the Rabbids? Oh, no, absolutely, 100%. I love because, the Rabbids. Because everybody did that when back mm -hmm. in the day. Everybody wanted to have their own thing, but they knew that they were just going to get shunned Ooh. because they were just the behind-the-scenes person. What? So they wanted to dress up and have their own oh. micro shiny moment. <laughs> so that's that's a that's a really good oh. thought, uh, you know, perspective to think. Incineroar taking a stock from Mr. Gohex Cam and King K Drool. Incineroar is in his last stock with 118%, unfortunately, but he's still putting up a very good fight. Joe the Phoenix says, I haven't seen Incineroar since Gen 8. I haven't either. Incineroar? Yeah, Incineroar is the one on screen right now. He's the oh. fire starter for Incineroar. Oh. Yeah, he's a cat fire thing, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, yeah. King K Drool, however, winning the match, giving Gohex one to zero currently. Gohex is a fantastic heavy player. Incineroar is not a very popular character. Not very good competitively outside of Fake Out and then building from there. But still fun that he got into Smash. Wish it was Totodile though. My favorite Pokemon. Totodile is your favorite Pokemon. Uh huh. It goes Totodile, Lapras, etc. <laughs> you, you stop it too. Yeah, because I have top two favorites. Lapras, etc. Because I have top two favorite, and then I have a list of favorites in non specific orders. That's hilarious. <laughs> Fantastic match from Mr. Gohex Gaming and Counter Spike Mike, though. Someone is knocking on the door in real life. Anyway, in Cinema was everyone everyone's BGC team. I think whenever Gen 8 was announced, because everyone has that one starter. But especially whenever it went into Generation 9 and like future generations, it was not very popular. Just not very strong as anything more than a, a team pick, if you will. Oh, shoot. Mr. Go Hex Gaming going on. I stopped collecting cards after Gen 2, and I have all of Gen 1 and all of Gen 2 from like from like beginning to finish mm -hmm. of the generation and I stopped collecting Go like Skin and Go Gen 3 Ganondorf it's easy to watch but then I stopped after Gen 3 because then I was just like okay no this is just obnoxious repetitive and annoying mm -hmm. because they're just remaking the same stuff and they're becoming less creative with their actions oh no Ganondorf falling to his death Unfortunate for Goex as he just took a stop off the Incineroar, but it was too cocky of a stocky. I will say he does look pretty bad, eh? For a Pokemon, but mm -hmm. at the same time, he doesn't have that... That feel. Pokemon feel. Exactly! I know what you're talking about. Oh my about. god, he doesn't have that Pokemon feel. There are some Pokemon. designs that make me very sad when it comes to Pokemon. For yeah. example, in Scarlet and Violet, I was a little sad, Wait, but... There, there's a Scarlet and Violet? Yep, Generation 9. 
similar to Sword and Shield, it's an open world game. There were some cute characters in Scarlet and Violet, but it just felt like LeChonk went too much towards pop culture memes, and it was just a pig, but Gohawk's going for a, a insane stock take on the Incineroar. Leaving Incineroar with one stock, Gohex with two. <laughs> Gohex once again messing up his recovery, leaving him at one stock and the Incineroar at one stock. It's kind of anyone's game, just kidding. No, it's not. Oh, that was it right there. Gohex destroying the Incineroar with the infamous Ganondorf sword. Making Gohex the winner, 2 to 0, and unfortunately, Counter Strike Mike the loser. Good game, though. I will say Lapras is 